Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spud Knocker. And today we're gonna go over two different procedures that are certainly required uh, in order to safely and effectively conduct combat operations in the F-A-18C Hornet. Today we're given the Royal Australian Air Force some love with our skins. This is a anniversary skin for three squadron. You can find that in the user file section of the DCS website. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. And these two procedures we need to conduct are setting countermeasures programs as well as selectively jettisoning pylons and stores. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and get started. As you can see, we're back on the Persian Gulf map. And it is a gorgeous map. I absolutely love this map. I love the performance, and I think it's a perfect geographical setup for a game like DCS World. So with enough talking, we'll go ahead and get started. So everything we need to do today, jettisoning stores or releasing countermeasures, we do with the master arm turned on. So to get to our profiles for the ALE-47. We need to go into our electronic warfare page here. We'll go ahead and select our ALE-47. We'll go over to ARM to view our profiles. We can see pro program one here. To adjust program one, uh, we can select chaff, flares, increase, decrease, um, and so on. So for pr my program one, I like to have it to be kind of my all-around program. So I like to have it release two chaff, and one flare. Others are expendable decoys. We don't have any at the moment uh, in DCS World, but they'll be coming soon. Uh, repeat. We'll go over here to repeat, and we'll bring these down to one. I only want it to release once, and because it's only going to release once, our interval down here uh, is irrelevant. So we'll go ahead and save this guy, and we'll step on over to program five. The reason we're also adjusting program five is if we press forward on our countermeasure switch, we will release program one. And if we select F on the program switch, we will release program five. So program five, I like to set up as kind of my BVR program. So we'll bring this down. Chaff, we'll leave that at one. Uh, repeat, we'll go over here. And I'm gonna have it repeat five times with an interval of 0 .7 so 0 0.75 seconds. So we'll go ahead and save that guy. This guy I like as kind of my anti-radar guided weapon uh, program. So if we got intercepted by Iranian MiGs um, or Phantoms or Tomcats and they fired a radar guided missile at us, I would go ahead and, and use this one. That other one is a good, uh, good for use against IR as well as uh, radar guided guns because we're still uh, releasing chaff. So we'll go ahead and return to our EW page. We've got it selected. Now we got a set it into manual mode. We'll step this up to manual one so that forward on our switch releases program one. And we got master arm set to on. We'll go ahead and head outside the cockpit and show you guys how this works. So, forward on the switch, program one. We saw two bundles of chaff release and a single flare, just as we programmed. We'll go ahead and do that again. And now we'll hit aft on the switch and release program five. Perfect, just as we set up. So another thing you can do, in case your programs are not working, maybe you've taken a little battle damage or the computer has malfunctioned, we go ahead and put this guy into bypass mode where we bypass the ALE-47, you get a line through it, uh, meaning your programs are no longer functional. And now, pressing forward, we release two flares, as we can see, and a single bundle of chaff. Now this may actually be useful if, say, you're uh, conducting a cast mission and you've got a JTAC on the ground or a FAC-A in the air and they're looking for threats for you and you just want to be able to react quickly using anything you need to be able to react to. Uh, say a, a man pad gets fired at you, maybe some radar guided guns get fired at you, something of that nature. So with that done, we'll go ahead and flip this guy back into on. So we got our ALE-47 back online, and we'll talk about selectively jettisoning weapons and why we may need to do that. So we'll go ahead and turn some lights on, shed some light on the subject. Head back outside, and you can see we've got Mark 82s on some brews on our outboard stations and three fuel tanks. 
Now we never want to jettison fuel tanks in training or on a, in a regular combat mission because fuel tanks cost money, just like everything else in aviation, um, as well as squadrons are only assigned a limited quantity, so we don't want to be dropping them all over the place, potentially hurting people on the ground, especially in training. Now in emergency, say we get jumped by some MiGs uh, that ambushed us or we've taken some battle damage, we need to release these guys, especially when it comes to battle damage because these guys are relatively large bundles of explosive liquid and we need to be able to release them in case they get punctured by shrapnel from flak, a missile, uh, a man pad, something of this nature because we don't want a fire or explosion external to the aircraft. So on our jettison button here we've got left fuselage missile, right fuselage missile, those are our cheek pylons holding two sparrows that we saw on our outside, rack launcher and stores. The rack launcher is the one that you're going to be using most of the time to actually jettison fuel tanks and bombs off of the aircraft. Stores is more for if you have a AIM-7 on these outboard inboard or outboard pylons and you need to re release those guys for whatever reason. So to select our pylon we want to jettison. We'll go ahead and select centerline first to release our centerline fuel tank first. Say we just took some battle damage and that one is the one we're worried about. So we just want to release that one and continue on with fuel in our two, pile, our two wing stations. So we'll go ahead and bring this over to rack launcher and we'll hit jettison. We'll head on outside and we can, we can see our fuel tank is now gone. So, let's say that uh, we're exfilling from the target area and we've already released our damage fuel tank and now, oh crap, we just got jumped by some MiGs and we gotta get light real quick. So we'll go ahead and deselect center. We'll select our two inner pylons. So we can see here, L is left, R is right, I is inboard, O is outboard. So that's how you can select those different pylons. And we've got both of them selected so we can release both tanks at the same time. We are a heck of a lot lighter now, ready to engage those MiGs. Now, you may need to jettison bombs in order to get even lighter to avoid air-to-air -air threats, or uh, say you got a SAM coming at you or something like that. But a more likely scenario in which you would need to jettison your bombs, especially in a more um, pervasive environment, would be you've got a hung bomb. You rolled on in on your target, you pressed your pickle switch, your bomb's released except for one. And one is just hanging there on the pylon and you gotta get rid of it. Cause it's a danger for when you land back on the carrier, back at an airfield, as well as we don't want that guy causing extra drag and uh, making it an issue for us. So if you want to release bombs, very simple, we pretty much do the same thing. We'll go ahead and release our two bombs. And away they go. They're gone. So we got rid of our hung bombs. Man, this mission is not going well for us. Okay, so we can also release our sparrows on our cheek pylons. And you may be thinking, Spud, why in the world would I want to get rid of my air-to-air -air missiles? They're not very heavy. They're not draggy. Why? Well, the, the main answer would be if we've got a hung missile, we've hit that pickle switch, and that missile did not fire for us. And that could be a danger, landing back on the carrier or back at an airfield once again, or battle damage. In the 1991 Gulf War, an F-A-18 flight was attacking targets in Kuwait, and one of the F-A-18As received battle damage from 37 millimeter and 23 millimeter flak shrapnel. And that shrapnel actually hit the Sparrow on the right cheek pylon and there was a massive fire. The pilot of the aircraft was getting ready to fly out into the Gulf and eject. However, upon inspection from his wingman, he realized that the rocket motor of the Sparrow actually fired and was and launched while still stuck on the pylon. Of course, the whole side of the jet was black, but he wanted to get rid of that missile as quickly as possible. The pilot, once upon hearing that his wingman said that the, it was actually the missile firing while on the pylon, 
elected to stay in the aircraft and bring it home to base. So that would maybe a certain reason you want to get rid of those missiles or hung missile as we said before. So we can go ahead to right fuselage missile, release, and it's gone. Now we're having a really bad day, so we got to get rid of our left fuselage missile. And it's gone. Now we've got ourselves a very clean Hornet. Now, I'm not sure if we can actually jettison our wingtip sidewinders. I didn't see anything about that in the NATOPS manual for the F-18C or in the early access manual. So if you can, somebody please let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll make an addendum to this video and uh, show us how to get rid of these guys. So thanks for watching guys. If you found it informative or you liked it, hopefully a little entertaining, please give me a like and a subscribe and uh, fly safe. Try not to break too many hornets out there. Thanks a lot, guys.